Okay, let's look at 2.6. We're going to write a few things in before we look at the printable notes. So whenever you do domain restrictions, we are looking at what would make the denominator um, equal to zero. And that's how we're going to restrict it. Um, we are going to use interval notation. Using unions. So remember unions is like, let's say it goes from negative three to positive seven. But then it skips seven because seven's what makes it um, zero, then seven to infinity. So seven um, is omitted. Let's say the denominator had had that x. Can I see number sixteen, please? Yes. <laughs> there you go. Let's say the denominator had x uh, minus seven on the denominator. So if the denominator was x minus seven, then seven would be what made the denominator equal to zero. And then another thing that could make that you would use for restrictions is a square root of, let's say, x. So on this one, we only want positives, positive values. So if we only want positive values, then we are going to restrict our X to be from zero to infinity. Negative values make it imaginary, so it's not a real solution. Okay, and then other things about combining functions. I finished. Okay, let's see how I can get over to that. Okay, so I just want to have these in our notes so that we have um, all of the different ways of combining functions. So we can do, first way of combining functions is to find the sum of those functions together. So we're going to have two functions. Let's say we have f of x and g of x are given. Then to do your sum, let's say it's written like this, find f plus g of x. Then that means you're going to do f of x plus g of x. Okay, the second one is a the difference. To find the difference of functions, so it'll look like this f minus g of x. So this will be f of x 
minus g of x. So make sure with this minus, it's going to change all of this g of x, change the sign of everything of that function. And you'll see some examples of that in just a little bit. Okay, the third one is product. So you'll see this as f g of x. So that means you're going to multiply your functions times each other. Oh, that's supposed to be a G. Whoops. And then the next one is a quotient, which would be F of X over G of X. Um, make sure you look at domain restrictions. Okay, and then... Um, the composite, I think that's what's called. Yeah, composite functions. Composite functions, it almost looks like fog. Where you have this circle right here. That means you're finding the composite of f of g of x. And when you do that, you're going to do f of g of x. That means you're going to plug in g of x in for the values of x in that function f. Sounds really confusing. I think you'll learn about this in algebra 2. Do you all remember this at all? I turned mine in. Thank you. I don't know which camera I'm looking at. Um, and then we have another one, golf of X. So it's going the opposite way. You have G of F of X. All right, so we are going to look at the problems that are on the printable notes. Okay, let's look at the solve problem. This says just find the domain. This function is just x squared plus 3x minus 17. It doesn't have any asymptotes. It doesn't have any imaginary um, roots um, or examples. Contains neither division nor an even root. So the domain is just negative infinity to infinity or all real numbers. So our pencil problem number one, f of x, 3x minus 4. There's no division and it's an even, uh, there's no even root. So this would just be a linear graph. 3x minus 12. It's just linear. There will be no domain restrictions. So it's negative infinity to infinity. Mr. 
this is saucy honey number five. Okay, so then this problem, we have 5x over square root of 24 minus 3x. So we know that this, the denominator, cannot equal 0, but it's also a square root. So it actually has to be greater than 0. So that's why you see down here that they went ahead and wrote the 24 minus the 3x has to be greater than 0. You'd solve that out. And this came out with x is less than 8. So that means it goes from negative infinity to 8. That is your domain. So for 1b, um, this is with the square root. So that can't, I mean, it has to be greater than 0, right? And then the denominator cannot equal 0. So we actually have two equations we need to solve, so we can restrict that domain. So x minus 2 has to be greater than 0, and x minus 5 cannot equal 0. So we add 2 to both sides. We get x has to be greater than 2, and then we add 5 to both sides. x cannot equal 5. I guess it's really greater than or equal to zero. I should have put that greater than or equal. Because if you have a square root of a zero, you get zero. So it can equal zero on top. It just has to be greater than or equal to. So this means if it's greater than or equal to two, then our domain starts out at two. And two is included because of that, that or equal to two sign. And then it goes up to five but it doesn't include five. So we're gonna put a parenthesis there. And then we're gonna union that with, we still don't wanna include five, but we can go all the way up to infinity. So this would be five to infinity. Okay, um, number two, they've given us two functions, f of x is x minus five, and g of x is x squared minus one. Find each function and determine its domain. So on this, we are doing the sum, the difference, the multiplication, and the division on each one. So same thing for on this side. We're using these same functions, which are different from the solve problem. So I'm going to let you do um, 2a, 2b, and 2c right now. So I'm going to put a pause on the video. I want y'all to go ahead and do those problems and then we'll come back together and see how you did. Remember the answer is at the very back. So if you want to check your answer before we do. Go ahead and let's look at it. So we would add the two functions together. So this really means f of x plus g of x, which would be 2x squared minus x minus 3 plus x plus 1. You'd add those together by combining like terms. So 2x squared, we have a minus x plus x. So those will equal 0x. And then we have negative 3 and positive 1, so that would be minus 2. It's quadratic. The domain has no restrictions, so it's from negative infinity to infinity. Next one, we're going to do f of x minus g of x. So this would be... 2x squared minus x minus 3 minus 
So I'm going to put that in parentheses, x plus 1. So we are going to have to change all the signs inside this parentheses. So it's 2x squared minus x minus 3. The f of x stays the same, but the g of x, all the signs will, will switch. So it'll be minus x minus 1. So we still just have 2x squared, but now we have a negative x and a negative x. That makes a negative 2x. And then minus 3, minus 1, be negative 4. It's also quadratic, so your domain has no restrictions. So it's negative infinity to infinity. Next one is f of x times g of x. So this will be 2x squared minus x minus 3 all times x plus 1. I like to have mine in a box because it makes it more organized for me. So I'm going to do mine in a box like this. Three rows, I mean three columns, two rows. And I'll multiply x times 2x squared, 2x cubed. x times a negative x, negative x squared. x times a negative 3, negative 3x. 2x squared times 1 is 2x squared. 1 times a negative x is negative x. 1 times a negative 3 is negative 3. Then we would combine our like terms. That would give us 2x cubed. And then we have 2x squared minus x squared. So I would leave a positive x squared. Negative x and a negative 3x would be negative 4x minus 3. This is a cube uh, function, cubic function. Um, there's no domain restrictions. Nothing that would make it um, a imaginary or a zero or anything like that. Okay, and then the last one is division. So we would do f of x over g of x. So we would do 2x squared minus x minus 3 over x plus 1. And we can see if we could simplify this. And I don't think there is one. So we are going to look at what would make this equal to zero. So x cannot equal negative one, because if I have negative one plus one, then that gives me zero. So x plus one cannot equal zero. Subtract one on both sides and you get x cannot equal negative one. So then our domain will be restricted where it does not include negative one. It can go all the way up to negative one, but it can't be equal. So that means we're going to go from negative infinity to negative one. Negative one is not included, so it's going to be a parentheses. Union, negative one to infinity. So this is how you would restrict your domain by writing in an interval notation. Y'all okay. have any questions? Okay. Alrighty. All right, let's look at composite functions. This is where we do the fog and the golf. So this one is f of g of x. That's how you would say it, f of g of x, which means we are going to plug in the g of x into x in the function. So everywhere we have an x, we're going to plug in g of x. So that means in the place of x, they plugged in 2x squared minus x minus 1. And then you keep the regular um, 
plus six on there. Then distribute and simplify. So that's what we're going to do on this one. We are going to use this as our f, I mean our x value, and we're going to plug it in everywhere we see an x in f of x. So this means f of g of x, which means f of 5x squared minus 2. All I'm doing is substituting in, which means I'm going to do 4 5x squared minus 2, then minus 3. Keep it in parentheses. So it was 4x minus 3, but I replaced x with the g of x. So see how it's the same expression? Just I plugged in x, uh, 5x squared minus 2 or x. And then you just need to simplify. So 4 times 5x, 20x squared. 4 times a negative 2 is a negative 8. And then we still have the minus 3. And then combine your like terms. So it's 20x squared minus 11. Can I see number 11? Yes. Okay, and then the next one is g of f of x. So instead of plugging in g of x in 4x, we're kind of plugging in f of x into g. So this means g of 4x minus 3, which means everywhere you see an x in our function, um, this would be 5x squared minus 2. So you do 5, plug in the 4x minus 3 for x, square it, and then minus 2. Four x minus three, you can do the shortcut or you can do the box. Four x minus three, so it'd be 16 x squared minus 12 x minus 12 x plus nine. which this would simplify to be 16x squared minus 12x, and minus 12x make negative 24x plus 9. And then minus 2. Don't forget that minus 2 on the end. That's easy to forget. So then we just need to distribute. So 5 times 16... 80x squared, 5 times a negative 24, say 120x, and 5 times 9, 45, and then we still have that minus 2. Then combine these like terms, we get 80x squared minus 120x plus 43. 3C, F of G of 2. So this means F of G of 2. So we're not using x, we are using 2 and for x in the g of x function. So this means um, we need to find out what g of 2 is. So that would be 5, 2 squared minus 2 because it's 5x squared minus 2. 
which that would be four times five, 20, 20 minus two is 18. Do you have two is 18? So then we're just doing F of 18. That means we're plugging in 18 for our function of F. So four times 18 minus three. I think that is a little bit easier than just a regular composition with X because you're actually working with the number instead of an expression. Okay, so four times 18 minus three. You can put that in the correct way, I think. Four times 18, what is that? 72, okay. So 72 minus three, gets you know. Okay, let's look at the last one. Determine domains for composite functions. So you're looking to see where your domain restrictions would be. So we want to do f of g of x. So f of g of x. And we have different functions here. So this would be 2 of 1 over x plus 3. What can x not be in this function? Well, we can, we have a zero that would be undefined on the bottom, right? Or, let's see. Oh, we're just finding the function. We don't have to do anything else. Okay, we want to get rid of this one over x. So we're going to multiply by x on top and bottom. Which makes it 2x over, if I multiply 1 over x times x, I get 1. And then 3 times x would be 3x. So that's our composite function. Can I do number 12? Yes. Okay, and so we want to look at this function. And this will help us with the next problem, which is the domain. What can X not be? What can it not be right here? Zero. So we know X cannot be zero. What else can X not be? That cannot equal zero. So we need to solve this out. So we do minus 1, minus 1, 3x equals negative 1, divided by 3. So x cannot equal negative 1 third either. So we have a couple of different, we have 0 and we have negative 1 third. So negative 1 third would come first. So you start with infinity. This is for the domain. And you can go all the way up to negative one third, but not include it. And then you union that with negative one third. And then you go up to zero now. But you're not including zero, so it's another parentheses. And then we're going to union that with zero to infinity. This can go on that other page, but I just needed to see the function for me to do it. So if we're restricting two numbers, then we're going to have three intervals that are union together. If you have one number that's not included, then you'll just have um, two unions, or what is it? 
two intervals. There we go. Okay, we're not going to worry about number five. You can look through at five, though, on your own. And that is it for our notes for today.